Hey everybody, Joel Pirate here. Welcome back to another Drunken Ramblings podcast. And here we go. Uh, it has been a week. Uh, you may notice that there hasn't been a lot of videos this week. Uh, I, uh, 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 how many times can I say that in the first five minutes? Uh, probably a lot. But it's been a week. Uh, I've been, uh, I see what I did there. I turned that, uh, I've been, yeah. I've been uh, doing overtime at work for the last week, and we've been, you know, I get home 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, so crazy. You know, got to be in bed by 5 or 6 to get any sleep. So it really hasn't left me a lot of time to do a lot. Um, uh, and so, you know, doing the video, actually recording the video is not that big of a deal. You know, that's what, 20, 20, 25, 30 minutes. Um, oh, I got a new hat, by the way. It's my movie hat. It's my first piece of the my uh, Jay and Silent Bob uh, cosplay thing. Uh, this is the hat that Kevin Smith wore in uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. 20 bucks from Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash dot com, whatever the hell it is. Anyway, get yourself one. It's a pretty cool hat. It's comfy, too, actually. Um... But I've been, you know, but recording the episode is not the big thing. I've got to do the preset, so what I call the preset. I've got to go into the world. I've got to, you know, mine for whatever materials I've got to do, um, prepare anything that needs to be prepared. And then when it comes time to film, then boom, we're into it. I show you what we need to show. Then I'm done filming. Then I have to, you know, render the video, er, edit the video, render the video, upload the video. And that all takes time, um, so it's not it's not as easy as just hitting the record button saying, "Okay, so here's what we're going to do today." I know a lot of YouTubers that do that. I'm not going to call anybody out by name. There are plenty of people that do that, where they just log in and say, "So, um, yeah, so what we're going to do today?" Blah blah blah, and then they just record for half an hour or whatever. I don't like to do that. I like my, I, I like things to be a little bit more cohesive. Like, here's where we're going to go. You know, here, here's where we want to go. Here's where we're starting. And this is boop, done. You know, it's like a TV show. You know, you don't want to see, in a TV show, you don't want to see people walking down the street, basically. You know, I, it, it's like, well, we got to get over to, you know, Jim Bob's place, you know, by three o'clock. And they're like, okay, let's go. And then they just, here's half an hour of them walking. You don't want to see that. You want to just say, oh, we got to get to Jim Bob's. And then, boop, they're at Jim Bob's. So I've got things I've got to get done there. Um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of work to be done. So I haven't gotten a lot of videos out. Um, again, ARC is... Arc's kind of on hold right now, guys. Um, I, I, with my graphics card the way it is, it's just not going to work. Um, you may or may not be able to hear it right now. Uh, here, I'm going to actually pop the microphone down there. Hang on. You're going to get a kick out of this. Sorry. That rattling noise? That's my graphics card. pretty bad so <laughs> it's in bad shape uh, it, it rattles and makes all kinds of noise and I have to edit it out of every video that noise uh, so again uh, that's another reason why I'm not playing especially art because it's so graphic intensive seven days to die isn't so bad because well, for some reason, it's just not so bad. I mean, it's not an optimized game by any means, but my graphics card doesn't seem to have to work so hard for seven days to die. Uh, it's... I don't know. It just doesn't seem to have to work so hard. So I've been choosing to play seven days to die. Now, we do have some bad news when it comes to seven days to die. Excuse me. Um... I have read on the forums this week, excuse me, I'm starting to catch a little bit of cold, so thirsty all the time. 
Uh, I have read on the forums in the last week that Alpha 13 is going to require a complete wipe of the world. Which makes me sad, because, you know, we found the bomb shelter, we worked so hard to fix it up, turn it into the missile silo. Uh, it's just like, oh god, now we're going to have to start all over again with a brand new world. I don't know. I may choose, I don't know if I can or not. It might be worth a try. I might test it. Just use the exact same seed, and then go to that position, see if it works, I don't know. Or I may just start up a new world and just go with it. You know what? You guys let me know down below what you think I should do. Should I just start a brand new world when 13 comes out and go for it? Or should I see if I can maybe keep going on the same world? I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards just starting over. I mean, we've built the missile silo. Let's move on and do something else. Alpha 13 is going to be pretty amazing, by the way. If you guys aren't following uh, Mad Mole's posts on the Seven Days to Die forums and you're a big Seven Days to Die fan, I suggest you at least go and read Mad Mole's posts on the forums. That's pretty much all I ever read anymore. Is is I've got his... Uh, you can actually click on the username and see view posts. I I have that actually hotkeyed so that I can just come in and be like, click... And then I can read everything that he's said or replied to for the day. Then, then I'm kind of up, to, up, you know, up on things. I know what he's working on. I kind of get a little rationale into his thinking. Kind of go from there. So that's where Seven Days to Die is at. But yeah, Arc. I'm not going to do anything with Arc until I get my graphics card. And again, I haven't done my graphics card because I've been, you know, had boy's birthday. Uh, last week, girlfriends is next week, so girlfriends is gonna be expensive. Yeah, all right. I've had enough hat. Drive me nuts for today. I've been wearing it for a long time, but it's a really sweet hat. It made on a nice. I don't know if you can. It's like a natural canvas. It's not like white canvas. It's it's very natural color, yellowy, like an unbleached. Very nice hat though. I like it. Oh, I feel better. Okay. So, um, I've got... Let's do a little recap thing here. Or, not a recap, but let me tell you what's going to happen today. Um, I've got a really great Star Wars Minute planned for you guys today. Um, the big news for the week is we're going to talk about the trailer that dropped last week during the Super Bowl. Or, Super Bowl, shit. During Monday Night Football, there was the, the, the newest and final, supposedly... Air quotes. Final um, trailer that's going to drop before the movie. I believe it is the final, but we're going to talk about that. Um, and then I've got some other stuff to talk about. But some of you guys were asking me about my R2D2 build and would I film it? Well, there's only so much to film, quite honestly. I can show you progress. That I can do. Um, I'll throw up a little picture here, um, maybe down here in. In this here corner. That's what I'll do. Um, I'll throw up a little picture so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But I'll show up the pieces that I've been working on. The first thing I've been working on is what's called the radar eye. Uh, and this is, well, I don't know, you can probably see this. Or you probably know which part this is without even having to look at a reference photo of an R2 unit. Uh, this is called the radar eye. Uh, and it has a lens inside of it, which a lot of guys use acrylic. Um, I wanted an actual glass lens. Ooh, you can see my picture. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. Ooh, pictureception. <laughs> um, I wanted an actual glass lens. So this is a magnifying glass. I got it for like four bucks at like Home Depot or some shit. Uh, and it just goes uh, in like here. Uh, and it's painted with black paint on the back side so that it, you know, yeah, I dropped it. Um, here we go. Uh, and it just fits in here, uh, and I'll hot glue it and all that shit, and it does actually fit better than it looks right now uh, on the screen, but that's kind of the look there uh, for that piece. 
set that down so it doesn't get all scratched up. Uh, but this guy here, this is not like you may notice in the reference photo that this is a different shape uh, than the reference photo. Um, and that is because the droid that I'm making, and I'll put that reference photo up right now, uh, is from an episode of Star Wars Rebels. It's uh, completely different. It's called an R4, not an R2. So uh, the shape on the eye is actually a little bit different. So I had to actually make this one up by hand. Um, and here I'll give you a little behind the scenes. This is made from the styrene plastic that I was talking about. It's white. I, this has since been painted, obviously, but um, we've got some like eighth of an inch stuff here. Um, the circle part is made out of one millimeter stuff. And then I've got some bracing. Uh, this little side piece right here was actually glued on separately. You can see the, uh, like the, the seam where it was all glued on. Uh, and then this side here, uh, I actually built up about four thicknesses of material just to get this side looking the way I wanted it to. It was a little too thin originally, so I had to build it out. And it took lots of sanding and filling, priming, painting uh, to get it uh, like I wanted it to. And then once I had it all sanded and primed and painted, I didn't like the look of the paint that I bought. <laughs> the paint that I bought was too shiny. Uh, the, as you can see in the reference photo, uh, he's not glossy. There's no shine coming from him. So this time I went with a little lower gloss paint. And I actually like the gloss on this one. I've used this before. This is actually uh, barbecue paint. <laughs> um, yeah, Krylon Barbecue Black is what it is. It's like a high heat paint meant for a barbecue grill. It gives a low gloss, but it's heat resistant. It takes your rusty grill and makes it look brand new again. But that's what this is. Uh, it's got the right gloss to it, and it's going to look really sweet once the whole droid is done. The second thing I got this week was I bought these online. These are, uh, and we'll go back to the original reference photo here. Um, these are called the logic bezels and these I'll highlight them on the photo but these guys will sit in there um, not crooked of course there you go and, and on my droid uh, they're black so they have a red around them on the front side but you will see this this lip right here anything to point with yes I do an emery board. Um, this lip right here, the lip that sticks out, fuck it, you can see it. <laughs> uh, the lip that sticks out, that sticks up, that's what you'll see. And then behind it will be a little screen with the little blinky lights and shit. These were cool. These were 3D printed. Um, there's a guy on the R2D2 forums. Um, I don't know if you can see these ridges or not, but you kind of see them. But this was 3D printed, um, and I ordered these from him, and it came, like, still attached where they were, like, glued or, like, built on the printer bed. They were still, like, attached. Whatever. You know what the, you know what I'm talking about. But these were cool. Uh, I'd never worked with these before, and that's why I use the Emery boards, because they're nice, stiff, you know, they're fairly stiff, and when you want to get in there and sand little details, they work great, um, and they... The, the pieces that you're going to see, the parts that you're going to see, um, they turn out beautifully smooth. These are gorgeous. And then, of course, I used a little filler and a little primer and a little paint to get these kind of where they are. And this is what I do when I'm tired. and I can just sit here and plop on a video and, and, and zone out sand and fill and prime um, and put those in or get those set up. So that's kind of what's been going on with the R2. Um, also, you can see behind me here, no, nope, over here, right there, this big white thing, uh, that is styrene. That's a 4 by 8 foot sheet of the 1 millimeter styrene that's going to make up the head for my R4. Uh, it's rolled up right now, but, but that's the stuff. And that I'm going to start on this weekend, hopefully. Hopefully I can get the head started at least. I can at least get the plans cut out. Ooh, excuse me, got burped. Um, I can at least get the, cut, the plans cut out 
I have the plans over yonder here. Uh, and then maybe I'll have something to show you next week. So, but that's it as far as R2 goes. Um, we will be having a guest next week. Uh, my friend from Pirate Academy, Sig Corpse, will be joining me. Um, I'm going to let him choose the topic. So, you know, of course we'll have the Star Wars Minute, uh, things like that. But I'm going to let him choose the topic. So stay tuned for that, the first of hopefully many guests. I like having people on. You guys uh, all loved having the boy on last week. I appreciate that. And uh, so does he, by the way. Thank you very much. He had a good time doing it, and he definitely wants to come back and do some more. And for all of you who said he was a good kid and articulate and all that, thank you. He's, I'm pretty proud. He's, he, you know, despite being a dipshit sometimes, so am I. He's a good kid. I love him to death. So, but yeah, um, so stay tuned for next week for, you know, well, I guess technically not the first guest, but, you know, the first guest that doesn't live here. That would be cool. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to work out face cam and all that. Maybe we'll just do it as a Skype thing where it's like split down the middle and, you know, we'll have me on one side and him on the other. I don't know yet. Uh, if he's even going to broadcast a, a uh, screen. He may not, and that's fine. Um, we'll figure something out. Don't you worry about that. Now, one of the things that I've been thinking about doing, and you guys... Again, let me know down in the comments if you guys want to hear, or I, I will say here, because this won't be a C thing. Uh, let me know if you guys want to hear this. I've been thinking about doing um, a movie commentary. Of course, the first one I'm going to do is going to be Star Wars, or one of the Star Wars. I'm not sure which one yet. Maybe I'll do all of them. Hell, I don't know. But I've been thinking about doing a Star War or doing a movie commentary where I can like cue you guys up. You can flip on the thing on Netflix or, you know, if you own it, then you can cue it up that way, whatever. Excuse me. Like I said, catching cold. Um, you know, and then I can just give you commentary over the top of it. I have watched so many movies in my entire life. Um, <laughs> And I'm sure I could point out some pretty insightful or fun things to say about the movie. Um, I would like uh, your guys' input on what movies or even TV shows. If You know, if it's like on Netflix or something, you know, if it's on there, hit me up. If it's something I want to watch or, you know, whatever, do a commentary on or have something funny to say, I'll totally do a commentary on it. Or, you know, maybe we can do it together. Let me know. I think that would be fun. Uh, you know, and it wouldn't be, I don't know that it would necessarily take the place of these, you know, Sunday episodes for the podcast. Maybe it'll do as a, uh, an additional episode for the week or something. Maybe something for Wednesdays might take the place of the arc on the Wednesdays. Who knows? We could try that. Um, I am going to do, I am going to do one of the Star Wars this week. I'm not sure whether I want to start with Episode 1, Phantom Menace, or if I want to start with Episode 4, A New Hope. I kind of want to do Episode 4, A New Hope, and do like 4, 5, 6, and then go back and do 1, 2, and 3. But it would be kind of cool again to do it in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't know. Um, I would like to get them all done before the new movie comes out um, in December. I don't know yet. But you guys let me know what you think. Um, I, I think it would be, and like I said, there's, it's not going to be all just Star Wars because there are so many different kinds of movies that I like that I would love to do commentaries on. I have a lot of things to say about a lot of things, as you all know. So, excuse me. And, yeah, so that's that. Now, yes, I have a beer in my hand. And I'm smoking a cigarette. But I have made a health choice this week. <coughs> Excuse me. It's probably one of the reasons I have a cold right now or starting to catch one. is because my body is pissed off at me right now. Seriously pissed off. Um... I watched a docu documentary this last week called Fed Up. It's on Netflix as well. I encourage you all to go check it out if uh, you're looking to improve your lifestyle. Uh, 
Oh, kitty cat. Moving. Kitty cat. Kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty. <laughs> no, I wouldn't kill him. He's too cute. But, you get a bug? No? Okay. Um, a documentary on Netflix called Fed Up. It talks about uh, the ever-increasing uh, obesity epidemic in America. And some of you may have seen my tweet on Twitter, which is where tweets are. Um, if you're not following me on Twitter, go, go hit me up uh, at JoeThePirate2.com. Uh, Joe right um, it's a really cool look at why... Things are the way they are in America, as far as you know, people's health and obesity and um, diabetes and 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 everything else. You know, we've we've struggled so long to get low-fat food and and all these healthy choices in our food, but when they take, I guess the main premise is when they've tried to make these healthier choices, when they take away the fat in the food. They replace it with sugar, and sugar is the real thing. Um, sugar is, you know, and it's not even just sugar. It's sugar substitutes, um, sugar, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, substitutes is one of the words I'm looking for, but analogs, I guess. Analog is... You know, not just sugar, but high fructose corn syrup and, and maltose and dextrose and lactose and fructose and all these other types of sugars. If you can eliminate them completely, um, and if you want sugar in your diet, then get it naturally. You know, have an apple or eat a carrot, you know. But get rid of processed sugar in your life and that's something i've been struggling with the last couple of days uh, i've been a huge huge diet soda fan for the last probably 30 years i mean as long as i can remember um diet coke was always my drink of choice diet pepsi actually recently diet pepsi because they changed their formula couple months ago, I think, and they chose, and they went from saccharin as a sweetener to, I want to say it was stevia based, but I could be wrong, but it, they changed their formula and I actually started to like Diet Pepsi, but then I watched this documentary Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday I think it was, and it made me just completely rethink everything that I eat or drink. Still not ready to give this up yet. Maybe I can wean myself off. Of it. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm I'm gonna try to give up processed foods and sugar for uh, two weeks. Um, we'll see how it goes. See how I feel. See how my body reacts. Um, which I already know my body hates it because I had a headache all day long, um, you know, runny nose for no absolutely no reason, and my immune system's like. Eat some sugar, you know. So I'm trying that. Um, one of the other things I've been looking at is a healthier eating alternative. Uh, I got uh, tipped to a website called blueapron.com where you can actually buy prepared meals. But uh, you can look it up yourself, blueapron.com, one word. Or you can sign up for a subscription where they deliver fresh food to your house. You know, they, they have recipes. You know, you could get, uh, what the hell is it? Yeah, I mean, it, there's all kinds of recipes on their site. They're healthy options. But they send you every ingredient you need, um, and you cook it, basically. You know, you want to have, shit, I'm trying to think of something that I remember, but I don't remember anything off the top of my head. But um, let's say like a short rib burger on pretzel bread. Okay, they're going to send you all that stuff, and all you have to do is prepare it. No, you know, or they're going to send you chicken marsala or some, you know, something like that. But they send you all the spices. They send you, you know, all the, the serving size, you know, everything. You can get it for two people, 
or you can get it for a four-person family. Uh, I'll probably get the four-person family just so I can have a little extra in the freezer. Uh, my freezer is normally full of frozen pizzas and burritos, which those are going to go by my. Uh, I'm not going to throw them out. I am going to eat them after the two weeks. <laughs> uh, for right now, I'm trying to make healthy choices uh, when I'm not at home, uh, it, which is difficult. Uh, we do have a few places around where I work where I can go get a fairly healthy lunch. Um, we have a local itch, dry skin. <clears throat> we do have a local uh, convenience store chain that sells some pretty healthy al alternatives, uh, lots of fruits, um, things like that. So I, that is one thing I'm really trying to do. Uh, I'm going to give it the two weeks, see how my body reacts, and if it if it does. You know, if it is a change, game changer, then I'm going for it. Um, I already feel better, and it's only been a couple of days, other than the headache and the stuffy nose and all that shit. Excuse me. Uh, I do feel better. I miss the shit out of some Diet Coke, though. Um, uh, all I'm drinking right now, besides the beer, obviously, um, all I'm drinking during the day is water, unsweetened iced tea, or coffee. And, and I don't put milk in my coffee anymore, because there's lactose in milk a type of sugar so i'm going to give that up for two weeks you know and and see what happens like i said to a guy who normally just sits there and guzzles diet pepsi every day all day just having to drink water and iced tea is just killing me but i do feel better Whew. excuse me a little later start tonight so i'm a little more tired than normal but Uh, and if you, any of you have ever started up a, uh, a thing like this or, or taken a challenge like this, or if you've seen the documentary, please say something down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Like I said, I highly recommend it. It's called Fed Up, F-E-D-U-P. It's narrated by uh, Katie Couric, and she's actually one of the executive producers. Um, they talked to, uh, you know, President Clinton and... You know, all kinds of health doctors and nutritionists. And, and they're actually, the, the, the premise of the story is they follow around like four or five kids, you know, teenage-aged kids who are obese. And it's heartbreaking, you know. I mean, just the struggles that, that these kids live with. I lived with them myself when I was a kid. Somebody asked me the other day, um, about a hat that I had hanging on the wall that said Navy and wanted to know if I was in the Navy. No, I was not in the Navy. Uh, I could not pass the physical because I was a tubby kid. Um, I'd always wanted to serve, never could. So I became a pirate. <laughs> Arr. Um, but it's something that I've struggled with since I was eight years old. I was, I was, you know, I was fairly thin up until I was about eight years old, and then I I moved in, well, I, you know, I moved a couple doors down from my grandparents, and Grandma just started stuffing food in my mouth. I was too skinny. You need to eat something. And so I did. I ate it, and I ate more of it and all of it. And, you know, that was in the late 70s, uh, which is just about when really heavily processed food started coming about and then my mom got a really good job so she started buying more convenient meals instead of actually cooking meals at home she'd bust just buy stuff that you know hey i can make this in 10 minutes and have the night free for myself can't say as a parent i don't blame her but these are the choices that were made and these are the choices that affected who i am today so like I said, if you if this is something that interests you, go check out that documentary on Netflix. You can also check it out at uh, fedupmovie.com, I believe is the name of the website. Fedupmovie.com. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, just an amazing, amazing video. Um, what is it, about an hour? It's between an hour and an hour and a half, something like that. But it's really heartbreaking to see these kids you know doing their damnedest especially there's a girl in the, in the movie and this girl busts her ass 
You know, she's always active. She's always doing this and always doing that, trying to stay active and increase. You know, we've been told for years, decrease what you eat, increase what you do. You know, get more exercise, eat less food. And she tries, and she's just blasting her ass, and nothing's helping her. Um, I would like to... I can know what happened to that girl. They never really do say at the end of it, which is kind of a bummer, but... Spoiler alert. But the rest of the information in the video is amazing. So, guys, go check it out. I highly recommend it. it, it if nothing, I mean, even if it's something, you know, you're... you're a healthy person, you eat well, and you're thin, and you know you're at, you know athletic and whatever. I still highly recommend it. It's there's some really good information in it. Um, and then go check out theblueapron.com. I said I'm thinking I'm going to try it out, and it's actually really affordable. Um, a family for a, a family meal, uh, you know, the family plan with four meals. You get a week's worth of meals for seventy dollars. It's like ten dollars a meal. I mean. To feed a family of four, for fuck's sake, that's that's cheap. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's cheap. You know, I can't go to the grocery store. Hell, I don't go to the grocery store right now and get a week's worth of food for 70 bucks. I'm spending, you know, $120, $130, and I'm buying crap, you know. Granted, there's probably 20 bucks worth of beer in there at least, but even still, you know, I'm not buying food that's good for me. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll still, obviously, I'll still end up buying food at the grocery store locally, you know, fruits and vegetables, hopefully, you know. Um, but the majority of the actual meals, the things that we actually cook, they're going to be shipped to the house. And they ship them in, like, a refrigerated carton. And, you know, it, it, where I'm at, it's not a big deal. There's always somebody who's coming or going from the house, you know, be it me or my son or my girlfriend who can bring the package in and put it in the freezer. So that's not an issue. But I think it's a really great idea. And, and again, it's something y'all could check out. There's some really, I mean, it's really great food. And a lot of it. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the, the portion sizes from, from people who, you know, are members. And they give you a lot of goddamn food. Pretty good. So, all right. On to... Uh, Let's get this over with. Let's get the Star Wars Minute going on here. Um, there is going to be, uh, at the tail end of this, I'm going to do some spoilers. Um, things that I have learned online that may be happening in the movie. Uh, but for the first part, you're spoiler free. Uh, first off, I got new comic books. Uh, I got episode three through, the hell is it? No, I thought I got more than that. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, I got three, four, five, six, and seven uh, of the new Star Wars comic books. And the glare is shit, and I apologize. Um, this is a first run, episode three, by the way. The cover is different, and yay. <laughs> That's why this one was uh, 5 50 instead of the, uh, the $4. But I have not read them yet. Uh, and the reason I have not read them yet is because I don't have episode two. <laughs> I've been looking all over town looking for episode two. I'm about ready to order it online. Uh, the girl at the comic book store is going to keep an eye out for a copy for me, and she's going to call me when she gets an episode two, because I definitely want a hard copy of it. <clears throat> I may, may just download it online, read it. That way I can continue reading the story with the rest of these. Um... But, uh, let's see, I got three through seven there. Um, I've seen nine, ten, and eleven around town. Eight might be a problem. Also, two and eight I may have to look for. Um, but that's that. But the movie trailer. If you guys haven't seen the new Star Wars movie trailer yet, and you're a Star Wars fan, I want to ask you what rock you're hiding under first. Um, it was an amazing trailer. They gave us a really lot of exposition in that in that trailer. They, I mean, you may look at it and say, well, they didn't tell us shit. You know, no, I beg to differ. I think they did. Um, with the first scenes with Daisy, um, Daisy Ridley, I think is her name. Ray is her character name. Uh, those first scenes with Ray, 
uh, on Jakku where she's, you know, scavenging. And I thought the shot of her, like, rappelling down into the Star Destroyer. God, that was an amazing video shot. I'm guessing it was a matte painting. Could have been CG, but I'm guessing it was a matte painting. But it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, reminded me of Raiders of the Lost Ark, honestly. I and That was like a very Raiders-like uh, shot, you know, especially like where Indy was going down into the, the temple in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, where the snakes were at the bottom, you know, where he was rappelling down. Oh, God, I, I thought that was, but on in like an epic freaking scale. Imagine that shot in Raiders now with that kind of a matte painting. That would look cool. Um but then we see um, we see uh, John Boyega's character, the black guy. Um, what's his name? Finn. We saw him, you know, escaping from a Star Destroyer, getting shot out, and landing on Jakku. So I'm guessing, and this is a guess. I don't know this for sure. Um, I'm guessing that he's, well, you know what? We're going to save that for the spoilers. So <laughs> um, they start to cut to the bad guy uh, in this flick is um, what the hell is his name? I'm having a brain fart here. Oh, Kylo Ren. Uh, and he's the guy in the mask. And he's looking at the Darth Vader mask and he's like, I will finish what you started. And he started to sound like Stallone there, didn't he? I will finish what you started, Adrian. No. Um, but he says, you know, he's going to finish what he started. Now, it looks like he's talking to the mask in the thing. I don't know whether it's two two different scenes that were kind of blended together to give us the illusion that he was talking to the Darth Vader mask. I'm guessing that it's, he was talking to the Darth Vader mask. I'll finish what you started. We don't know what he was going to finish, and we don't know what Vader started. Is it to crush the rebels? Is it, you know, because at the very end of, you know, episode six, you know, Darth Vader was a good guy, so... You know, is he gonna try to wipe out the Empire? Not, which I doubt, by the way. Because you gotta have a, you know, antagonist. But, um, but that was a cool scene. I love the curled up, crushed, burnt mask and everything. And we'll get, well, here's, and this isn't spoilers, because I don't know. Um, I, I, I only put this together with my, my two brain cells that I got left. Where the hell did he get the mask? Okay. Well, obviously, the last place we saw that mask was on Endor in Episode 6. And so he would have had to have gone there. Unless Luke took it with him, which I doubt. I mean, it's not like, here, I'm going to burn my dad's body. <sighs> okay, now let's throw it all into a hefty bag and take it with us. So I'm guessing it was left somewhere on Endor. So hopefully we'll be going to see Endor again. And hopefully this guy will take that badass broad sword lightsaber thing and start chopping the shit out of Ewoks with it. That would be cool. That would be an awesome visual, actually. Not too many people like the Ewoks back in those days. I'm one of them. Uh, so it would be cool to see him just like slicing off little Ewok heads. I mean, they did have a little little bit of... The Ewoks did have a little bit of a fetish with helmets. You know, at the end there, they were like banging on like drums and shit. Maybe they grabbed Vader's mask and it's there, you know. Who knows? Maybe he'd just walk up and, out, and then take the helmet and go. That would be cool if we get to see that shot. But uh, then we get to the uh, then we get to the shots of the Millennium Falcon with uh, Harrison Ford's voiceovers. It's so amazing. Um, telling Ray uh, that it's true. It's all true. The Jedi's the Sith, everything. It's all true. Which begs the question, wouldn't she have already known that? You know? We, at the end of the last movie, the Jedi and the Rebel Alliance, they won the war. So, wouldn't everybody know that Jedis were real? We'll save that for spoiler cast. Um... And then there's there's a, a shot of Daisy crying. Like she just saw somebody she loved just being murdered in front of her. Um, we're going to save that for spoiler cast. <laughs> um, we see a robotic hand reach up and touch R2's dome, which sounds, sounds kind of dirty, but it's not. 
Um, he reaches up and touches R2 right on the, right on the dome, you know, which we're assuming that that's Luke Skywalker. Cause you know, remember he did get his hand cut off. Uh, so we're assuming that's him. Uh, we don't know. And then, you know, there's lots of shots of space battles and shit and, uh, which I really like, or not space battles, not even space battles. These are interplanetary, or planetary space battles. There's no space battles that we see other than that original TIE fighter back at the beginning. So this is all, all on the surface space, you know, TIE fighters and X-wings and shit. And oh my God, it looks so cool. The, it looks like dogfight footage, only better, you know, like World War II dogfight footage from, you know, when you see planes shooting each other down and shit. This looks even better than that. Obviously, you would hope so with a, you know, $200 million budget and Disney and, you know, CG. <laughs> it better look better, damn it. You know, we see Han and Leia hugging. How Freaking cool was that with the music swelling. Dude, I cried. I actually cried. I watched it about 15 times, by the way, so far. Anyway, I'll probably watch it about 15 more, but I've watched that trailer at least 15 times. And yeah, when Han and Leia are hugging and the music's swelling up, I was like, oh my God, they're going to they're gonna hug. You know, it was, yeah, not my manliest moment, but not ashamed to admit it, God damn it. Refill. Um, so, yeah, that's, I don't know. That's pretty much my impressions from the Star Wars trailer. It, it looks badass. Um, I was already sold before. It's like, you know, before they even showed this, it was like, Star Wars, well, take my money. <laughs> um, now it's like, <laughs> take my money and my kid and my car and my house. Take it all. Fuck it. I don't care. I just want to see this movie. Um, it, I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold. It's going to be an amazing movie. Uh, it's going to be an epic movie. I love the fact that they're using practical effects. They do use CGI, obviously, but most of this stuff was done with practical effects, uh, models and puppets and, you know, not CGI Yodas and shit. No, we're actually going to have foam latex puppets and, and monster costumes and actual shit interacting with the scenery. It's going to be amazing to see. The performances look really damn good. I'm I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far of Daisy Ridley. Her it, it, she she's kind of Kira Knightley hot, you know? She's got that same kind of mouth, you know, big wide mouth, lots of teeth. Which is how I like a girl, you know, with all of her teeth, but I mean, this is like really really toothy. She's really pretty. And spitting all over the mic, jeez. Um, I think she's gonna be she's gonna be really great. She is obviously the lead character, in my opinion. There's no doubt about it. By the way, we're gonna go longer than ten minutes. This is fucking Star Wars. This is a trailer. Get used to it. After the movie's out, then you know we won't have as much to talk about. But right now, we got a lot to talk about. Mm. Spilled beer all down my boob. Um, or down my moob. I don't have my hat. Movie is moob. Anyway. <laughs> um, her acting looks phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, John Boyega, his character looks pretty damn intriguing. I mean, it looks as though he's going to be a, a, a an Imperial stormtrooper who says, I don't want to be an Imperial anymore, and splits. And they they shoot him down for his troubles. He's like, well, you want to live? And then he crash lands on Jakku, meets up with Ray, And then, you know, the adventure begins. <clears throat> there is the other character there in one scene where you can see, like, Kylo Ren's hand and he's like, he, like, using the force on a dude. That's Poe Dameron is the character's name. And he's... I don't know, I guess if we're going to call it anything, he's going to be like the Han Solo of the picture, other than the other Han Solo. Um, there's a lot of theories going around online about what his character is going to do. I'm 
I have my theories. I'm not going to voice them quite yet because that's a pretty complex character, and I think it's going to have a lot of plot devices attached to it. Uh, I think that character is going to be the one that is going to be the exposition for the entire film. What we don't see a lot of is we don't see a lot of Luke. Uh, we don't see a lot of C-3PO, although I know he's in the, the picture. I've seen pictures before where they show him having like a red arm, um, meaning he's taken some damage or something and hasn't gotten it fixed. Um, we saw R2, obviously. You cannot have Star Wars without R2 because he's the consistent character in every single episode. It's like he's telling the story and we're all here to watch. So you got to have R2. Um, and then, of course, Chewbacca was in it. So, you know, I can't do it. I won't even try. I tried. I won't do it anymore. So, yeah. So that's pretty much my thoughts. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it. Uh, please, again, leave your comments down below. And we're going to end on spoiler cast. So if you guys don't want to hear any more spoilers, you all have yourselves a wonderful day. Uh, please hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you next time. For those of you who want to hear the spoilers, um, please keep listening. Now, these are not official spoilers. These are only some very, 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 very well thought uh, fan theories that have been backed up with what we've seen so far. Uh, and a few leaked bits of information from Lucasfilm. All right. If you don't want to hear anymore, stop watching now. Hit the like button. Stop watching. Here we go. Spoilers. We're pretty sure Han Solo is going to get fucking killed. Um, and that's why Daisy's crying in the one shot. Uh, Daisy is theoretically, supposedly Han Solo and Leia's kid, as is Kylo Ren, uh, e the bad guy, um, who is obsessed with his grandfather, i.e. Vader. Um, With the death of Han Solo, which is going to come in at about the end of Act 2 in the flick, everybody's wondering, where in the fuck is Luke? We haven't seen Luke through the whole movie. Uh, we won't, well, rather, we won't see Luke through the whole movie, other than maybe a flashback here or two, here and there. Just one or two flashbacks of Luke, just so we're reminded, hey, Luke's still a part of this fucking story. But we're going to see flashbacks. Now, where in the hell is Luke? Well, after Return of the Jedi, you know, they may have wiped out this one portion of the Empire, but they didn't wipe out the whole thing through the whole galaxy. It's a big fucking place. There's a lot of damn empire, imperial, Imperials out there. So they may have beaten the Emperor and Vader, but they have not beaten everybody else. And that's where the First Order comes in. That's where all these stormtroopers and the, all these guys come in. That's the First Order. They're going to, uh, they're trying to rebuild the Empire, and the Rebels have not won, obviously, and Yoda told Luke to pass on what you have learned. Well, I'm guessing, this is just my theory, this is not shit I've heard, but I'm guessing that he tried to teach Leia at one point. But she didn't take well to the training, or she wasn't really that good, or she didn't have enough of the force to really do anything with it. So he said to heck with it. And then at some point, for some reason, which I still don't know because it's a plot point and I don't know why, he just says, you know what, I don't want any part of this new government. I'm out of here. Fuck this. Maybe he got. Cr maybe he went crazy. Maybe he's questioning his allegiance. Maybe he's like, am I light side or am I dark side? And he just goes off to be with himself. Him, him and Yoda and 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 Obi Wan and you know, Hayden Christensen can just sit and talk Force ghosts all amongst themselves um, at Luke's little island hideout. So. We're wondering all about Luke for about two-thirds of the movie here. And then after Han Solo gets killed, I'm guessing that Luke feels that disturbance in the Force. Then we get really start in, started hardcore into where is Luke. 
we need Luke. We need Luke now. We need him here. We need to fight this fucking battle. So that's when Leia passes on a message to Daisy, well, Ray, and Finn. Says, okay, I think I know where Luke is. I need you to go and get him and give him this. And that's when she hands her her father's lightsaber, the, the lightsaber that Luke had originally, the blue one, says, he'll know this is from me. So they go to look for him in the Millennium Falcon because Han Solo is dead. Ray, there is a shot online somewhere leaked of Ray and Chewbacca flying so, the, the Falcon. So they take off. They go looking for him. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren's looking for him, too. They meet on this whatever planet that Luke is on. We see that shot in the trailer where uh, where uh, Finn is holding up the blue lightsaber, like, like scared out of his ass. You know, everybody's everybody's saying, "Oh, he must be a Jedi too." No, I'm thinking this is the only thing he had in his fucking hand, and he wanted to try to defend himself. He didn't have a blaster with him or anything, or the blaster got knocked away or cut in half, whatever, by uh, Kylo Ren. So I'm guessing this is just like, oh, this is the only thing I had in my fucking hand. I'm going to do. And then Kylo Ren kind of attacks him a little bit. He kind of, and then pew, this green lightsaber is going to come into the screen. And we're going to be like, holy fuck, it's Luke. And after some dialogue and Kylo Ren runs off like scared a little bitch, I have a feeling that's going to be the end of the movie. I think we're going to see Luke for all of about, not counting the flashbacks, I think we're going to see Luke for all of about five minutes that whole movie. Everybody's going to be pissed. Don't say I didn't warn you. Those are my theories. I could be wrong. If you got your own theories, let me know. Uh, you know, I'm always up for that. Um, no, we are going to call it for today because this file is getting big and it's getting late. <laughs> so, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Peace out.